hands. We are going to sing. We are going to give him it all. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to catch the wave, catch the revival wave. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Stay connected. Glory to God. We also have a beautiful time after the service of testimonies. Amen. 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 If you have received a, any type of an impartation from the Lord here, which I know everybody has, but if you have received one that you would like to testify about, deliverance, healing, you've had a miracle, you've had God touch you or a family member while you've been here in service or you've been watching online, we want to know about it. So if you're here today, we'd like you after the service to go back to the table. There's a sign back there. It's right by the little TVs that say 5F Church. And we want to videotape your testimony so everybody can see what God has done for you. Amen. It will lift other people's faith. And it will also overcome the devil. Because the word of your testimony is so powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. So that will be after service. And then want to know if you are a musician or a singer and you are planted at 5F Church, you want to be part of 5F Church, we would love to have you come and speak with us and speak with the worship team about that. So on the back of the connection card, go ahead and put your name and what gifting, musician or singer, and then take that up to the welcome booth up there in the entryway. Amen. After service. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is moving mightily. And I am so excited to hear what our beloved Apostle Catherine has to release today. Are you? Let's stand and welcome our beautiful Apostle, Pastor and leader of 5F Church, Apostle Catherine Trick. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revival is now here and in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. You can have a seat. Praise God. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord in the best, the best day of the week, Sunday. Amen. I'm so expectant and excited for what Jesus will do today. He's truly alive. He's here in this place. He is the healer and deliverer and the miracle worker. He's in the business of doing those things, those miracles, all the time. And he's in the business of doing them today in your life. Are you ready to receive today? Amen. Amen. Well, I want to welcome all of you who are visiting here for the first time. If it's your first time here, can I see your hands? Welcome. Welcome. So many. Welcome. Hallelujah. We are so blessed to have you here with us. And we're so excited for what Jesus is going to do in your life today. Because he does want to come and touch you. This isn't just something to watch here. No. You've come to encounter Jesus. Jesus has brought you here to have an encounter with you to touch you, to release his spirit, more of his spirit, his power in your life. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I also want to welcome everyone who has traveled to be here today. I first want to welcome those who've traveled across the U.S., across the country to be with us. If that's you, can you just stand up if you've traveled across the country to be here today? Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah amazing. We are blessed to have you here with us. And I want to welcome also all of our international visitors. It, um, I, I, I see here, got to turn my iPod on. There we go. Um, we have people from Canada. Can you stand up? Welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. We have um, some from Brazil. Can you, welcome, welcome, hallelujah, and Mexico, welcome, Ukraine, welcome, and Australia, welcome, <laughs> hallelujah. Are there any other nations that traveled all the way here just to be with us today? If so, stand up. 
Or is that all of them? Praise God. Well, praise God. Where'd you come from? Where? Was that? Colorado? Oh, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there were some testimonies that were shared. I believe it's um, the, the group from Canada. Is that right? You had shared some testimonies. Is that right? Could you come up to the stage and share them with us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome. Hallelujah. Hi. So blessed to have you with us. So I heard testimonies of miracles that happened while you watched online. Is that right? Was that you? Do you want to share what happened as you watched? Yeah. Okay, I started uh, late December, and then I, I didn't stop after that. I, I don't even remember how I came across your videos. And then I, initially I was skeptic, like, what, what is this? It's something new. Because I'm from, we are from an evangelical church back in Toronto. And uh, we don't know about the apostle and the prophet of the fivefold, that the fourth and the fifth one is there. So it's something new. So I'm kind of skeptic. So I watched more. I couldn't stop. Like, every night from work, I would like to just settle down and just look for your videos everywhere. And then find out you have live videos, you have Q&As, you have the Zoom calls. And I saw all the short videos that showing all the healings and even for children. I mean, you can't make that up, right? I mean, so that started, you know, my, 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 my strength, my, my, my attention, like, I, there's hope. Because my daughter here, Patricia, she's had like um, for four and a half years now, a trouble in her mental, um, mental condition. She, she's diagnosed with schizophrenia. She's heard, heard voices, tormenting ones. She's been suffering. She's under medication. We have church support back home. And we've tried everything. And she's just like, because of her, like, um, her sufferings in terms of like being suicidal. Would you like to share? Your... Okay, right now. Okay. It's okay. You can just finish the testimony, hon. And I want to pray for her after this. Okay. All right. And, and um, so knowing that, I was just drawn to your videos. So while watching your videos, I've had like deliverances. I just have like involuntary movements, shaking and stuff. And I would even call my husband, Antonio, like, look at me, look at me, you know. And, um, and initially, it's like, oh, what is this? What is this? Uh, um, it happened not only once. Like, it's a, like a pre-taped video from like in another country and then in that portion at the end when you minister and you start the healing and the anointing to everybody spreading all that i started to do things that you know i'm just relaxing on my bed but i'm just thrown back couldn't control whatever and it's just boom 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 sometimes during my lunch break at work in the computer um i just from my chair i will fall down because of the so much shaking and stuff um, and I think, I, I, I say, is, is this God? Like, you know, I know it is because I'm not scared. I'm just surprised, you know. So, and then I never stopped. And I told them we need to go to where the anointing is. You've, I've, I've listened to all your, almost all your teachings. And I have your book in Audible. I've listened to that finished. So I've been hooked. And I know, like, you're a vessel. And this is all from Jesus. So I'm uh, very glad here. And I just want to tell a short story. Like when we came here, our flights were canceled because we booked with Air Links. Like it's a Cal Calgary-based airline. And it, they ceased operation during that, like two days ago. And they were supposed to like, um, we, we were supposed to fly still. But they just canceled. We were already checked in. So we had to like buy new flights. Right there, there, the airport. Yeah, at the airport, so much stress, and then something in immigration also. So I think the enemy was trying to like do stuff for us to come here, like you know, just smoothly. And but we're so blessed because we have family who have supported us. They know they live here in California, and um, they know why we're here. Praise God! Praise, praise God! And we're expectant. Amen. Hallelujah. And did you want to share the transformation, like before and after, from watching? Um, 
okay, I'm, I'm usually anxious. I have insomnia. I have pain and fibromyalgia, autoimmune disease, spirit of poverty. I, I rebuke that. And um, doubt, too. And just, just the anxiety because we see our daughter suffering and because it's mental illness, it's spiritual because we've done everything. And we even had uh, a person come to our house to release us. I had releasing at that time. And I know I think it's generational curse because my dad was had mental illness as well. Some of my relatives back in the Philippines. And um, I think I have that, like, that curse. We don't have witchcraft though. Um, my faith has grown. It's different now. Because you said the Acts Church from before. It happened before, but it was so rare now that it's something new to us. And I believe it's happening again now. It's here with us. And I, I'm just so excited that it's possible that like God is actually touching us, like really touching. Like when you do this, over the, you know, when you do that. Praise God. It's so powerful. Hallelujah. Come here right now. Stand right here. Stand right here. You stand right here, hon. Yeah, right here. God is... You can come over this. God is touching all of you right now and bringing freedom. He brought you here today to receive this deliverance. And the devil is defeated. You have victory today. And these things that you struggled with, it's demonic. It wasn't you like not doing anything enough or something. It was a work of the enemy. And this work of the devil is going to be destroyed by Jesus' power right now. Thank you, Jesus. I break every generational curse off of this family now in Jesus' name. And I detach you all from these things that you said about her, the mental problems, suicidal thoughts. And I declare every spirit of suicide, every spirit of mental illness, every spirit bringing torment in your mind, every spirit in you of anxiousness, of infirmity, I declare all must go now, in Jesus' name, I speak freedom and healing for you all now. I speak all sickness out of your body. Be healed completely. Be free in your mind. And I release this anointing for this revival fire to increase in your heart. Let it spread throughout Canada, where you live and beyond, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing to you. Let this fire increase, in Jesus' name. I speak healing in your mind. No more of these demonic thoughts again, dark thoughts again. Complete freedom, in Jesus' name. Peace. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I have a couple of announcements before we get into the word. The first announcement is that due to circumstances that are unavoidable, we will not be able to gather in this place, in this building next Sunday. So we will be meeting at a different venue next Sunday and also a different time. Here we go. It's going to be at the Belasco Theater, which is less than a mile from here at 12 p.m. next Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So those of you watching online, our online family, that's, that's 12 p.m. Pacific time. 12 p.m. Pacific time. So that's one hour earlier than our previous time of 1 p.m. Hallelujah. So make sure you uh, take a picture, a reminder. Don't forget. Next Sunday, set an alarm. Don't miss it. Don't show up at five <laughs> Amen. Or, and, and at this place. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I also want to welcome our online family, everyone who's watching online, our Fivefold Church family across the world, and those of you that are getting up in the middle of the night and morning to watch this, and also those of you watching the replay later, welcome, we love you, and 
be expectant for Jesus to come through the screen and touch you in power today. Share this with your friends and family so that they can receive Jesus too. We heard this amazing testimony of how this precious woman from Canada received miracles, received the power of God just by watching all the way, many, many, many hundreds of miles away. He's gonna do the same for you right now uh, in this service, in this live stream. So share this with your friends so that they can receive too. And also write in the comments where you're tuning in from because we wanna see where you're watching from and welcome you online. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, now we have a second announcement. This is a very exciting announcement and we have a little video to show you to share the announcement. For the glory of God to be the light of the world. You are meant to thrive, to prosper, to flourish. Barrenness and stagnancy is a work of the devil to try to stop you from being who you were called to be. It's time to break free from what has held you back. It's time to flourish. Hallelujah. It is my pleasure my honor to announce the first ever Fivefold Church Conference. <laughs> Hallelujah. Flourish April 26th and April 27th of this year. That's two months away. This is going to be such a powerful conference, such a powerful move of God, where God is going to deliver you, deliver all who come from demonic spirits, demonic oppressions that have brought stagnancy and barrenness because this is a spiritual thing. When you see you, that you are stuck and you don't know why, this is an, an indication that it's demonic and you need the anointing to destroy that yoke. So this is what Jesus is gonna be doing during this conference. He's gonna be delivering people, delivering you from what has been holding you back. It is now time to flourish. It is time to go glory to glory, to prosper, to live in the abundant life that Jesus has paid the price for you to have. It is time now. This is God's timing right now for you to be set free and flourish. Amen. So we're going to have multiple sessions over these two days, and there is going to be an impartation session as well. So at this conference, you will receive deliverance if you need it. You will be equipped to maintain your freedom and then walk in this abundant life, to not just stay stuck anymore or go slowly, but go at the pace that God wants you to go, glory to glory. And you will also receive impartation to be a powerful vessel of God, an anointed vessel of God. Amen. So this is so exciting because this conference is going to be a time where most, if not all of our fivefold church family across the U.S. and across the whole world will gather together, be in one place. Yes, this is one of the big reasons God has spoken that this must take place, is it's time to come as one body, be in one place, and receive something so powerful from him. So um, all of you who are watching online, all of our fivefold church family, do everything you can to get here. Do everything you can. You do not want to miss it. God wants you here, and he has something so powerful and special for you here. Also, I want to mention the importance of specifically receiving impartation at this conference. Impartation can be released through the screen, but there is something powerful that happens when we make the sacrifice and come in person come close to where that anointing is being released physically. And God has spoken that he's releasing something so powerful, something that's not like just every Sunday and through the screen, but something special, something so powerful and rare he is releasing at this conference. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So on our website, you can 
get tickets. There's a, there's a link to tickets and the details and the times and, and everything, all of that information. I'm so excited. And is anyone excited? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we're going to get into the word of God right now. Who's ready to receive the word? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. It says, for we walk by faith. So listen closely because we don't have the scriptures today. So listen very closely. Or if you can pull up your Bible apps. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith not by sight. We walk, for we walk by faith, not by sight. This life as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, is a life of walking in faith. Walking in faith that God is good. Faith in his character. That he's faithful, that we can trust him, that he is good, that he loves us, and he will never fail us. We walk in that faith. We walk in faith of the principles of his kingdom. Principles of his kingdom that he releases promises to us. He's a promise-keeping God. And that when he releases promises to us, we can know for sure that they will come to pass as long as we do our part of surrendering to God and obeying him. So we walk by faith in the promises of God. We walk by faith believing that the promises will come to pass. We walk by faith in, his, in God's character that he, he will protect us, that he will never let us fall, that he will fight our battles for us, that we will have victory. We walk in, in faith of the promises he's given us that of abundant life, of healing and freedom. These are the things that we walk in faith by, but not by sight. We have spiritual sight, spiritual sight to see these things about God, to see these things about the spiritual realm, the principles of the kingdom. We see those things in the spiritual realm because God's opened our eyes, but we do not see all that God sees. We do not see every little detail of what our life's going to look like following God. We do not see what's going to happen between now and the promise fulfilled. We don't see exactly what the journey is going to look like. This is the meaning of we walk by faith, not by sight. I walk in faith, trusting God, knowing his character, knowing the promises will come to pass, but there's a lot I don't see. I don't see how the promises are gonna come to pass. I don't see all the battles that I'm gonna have to go through. I don't see all the, the, the schemes the devil's planning that, that, that's gonna be a battle, but I will have victory in, I know that. But I don't know what the battles are gonna look like and how God's gonna come through and what the miracles are gonna look like, but I know the miracles will come. And a big part of walking by faith, not by sight, a big part of not by sight is not having sight of the timing of God. We know the promise will come to pass. God has spoken, I'm going to do this in your life. But we do not know the timing of when that promise will come to pass. We know that there will be different seasons in our lives. We know that there's a lot that we have to do to get to that promise. Like we feel far away maybe sometimes. We know that there's a lot of levels we got to level up to. But we don't know the timing of step one and step two and step three and step four. We know there will be mountaintops, we know there'll be valleys, but we don't know the length of time it will take to get up to the mountaintop. And then we don't know the amount of time we're gonna be chilling on the mountaintop before God takes us through a valley again to refine us and get us ready for the higher, next higher mountaintop. 
We don't know how long that next valley is going to be. And so we can have that restful rejoicing moment on the mountaintop again. <laughs> and the victory is ours. We don't know how long that battle is going to be. But we know we will have victory. So, so we know these things, but we don't know the timing. I'm teaching today about God's timing. How to be on God's time. And so, first of all, it's so important for us to know that God's timing is, this, is a big part of the not by sight part. Most of the time, we don't know God's timing. Sometimes God can release a prophecy, for example, and say, this year, this will happen. But usually, it's, it, the prophecy is not a specific day. Even if we do have a year, we don't know if it's day one or day 365 of the year. Right? So most of the time, we don't know the timing of God. And that's okay. And that's something we got to accept. But when it's time to do something he wants you to do, to go up to the next step, to go to the next season, to move to move away from circling the, round, the mountain, the roundabout. When it's time, he'll speak, go. So he'll speak to us, go and stop. We know when the time is right. But we usually don't get an indicator of like three months before. He's not going to say, three months, I'm going to say go. No, we're just, we're just here waiting on the Lord, not knowing when it's time to, to follow the cloud. When, I mean, when the cloud will move. And then all of a sudden, God will say, it's time, go. Second Peter 3, verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. I'm going to explain this scripture because, I mean, reading it can kind of, I know we know the scripture and we can kind of just like skip past it real quick. With the day, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. So for us, a day is a day. A day is never like a thousand years for us. For us, a day is a day. For, I mean, for us on this earth, a day is a day. But for God, a day could be like a thousand years, meaning what we think would take 1,000 years to accomplish, God can accomplish in one day. With us and our logical minds, we're like, yeah, that thing, like that kind of way that God's going to transform the body of Christ, purify the body of Christ, restore the Acts Church, that's going to take 1,000 years. God can do in a day if he wants to. <laughs> Hallelujah. But at the same time, 1,000 years could be like a day to God. Now, our time on earth is a vapor. It, 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 we will, God is there for eternity. There's no even, he, he always was. But the, the time forward, the, 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 the years forward that we will go, we cannot comprehend. It's eternity. It's far more than billions of years. We can't comprehend. It's forever. So our time on this earth is a vapor compared to that. So our, our mindset is more like 100 years or 90 years, whatever you think your lifetime would be. And so that's like all of eternity to us and our minds logically many times. That's like how we think. It's hard for us to think about eternity, right? But for God, he's not thinking 90 years. He's thinking eternity. So 1,000 years is actually a very short time for him. So sometimes um, God wants to take things slow. Not slow to him, but slow to us. God needs things to marinate. 
God knows that something will crush. It won't be ready. Um, it won't be ready if we, we, we rush things. The example of the end time revival again. It could be 1,000 years prior to now. God could have, been, could have been saying, all right, now I'm going to start to prepare my bride for the end time revival. I'm going to start by laying on the heart of people to desire for the Acts church, the power of God to be in the church today. And I'm going to put a burden on their hearts to pray. I'm going to put a fire in them. Even to just start speaking about what they see in the Acts church when they read the Bible. He can start to do things even 1,000 years ago. And he knows, he knows 1,000 years later at this time on this earth this move that he's brought, the leaders in the move that he has risen up, he knows that now the body, the world, will be able to accept his move, accept his leaders, because he has gone perfectly, slowly, preparing the way, gradually, till the time is right. Amen. So, the scripture after this verse says that God, the summary of the scripture is that God never delays. Though it may, see, it may seem like he is delaying, he never is delaying. He's never late to bring the promise. So it's so important for us to keep in mind God's perspective of things. That's the right perspective, not our worldly perspective. We need to think about God's perspective when it comes to timing. When we think he's delaying, he's not delaying. We're just in the carnal mindset. Hallelujah. If it makes logical sense for something to happen in a certain timing, many times, that's not God's timing. And that's for reason number one, because of the scripture we just read about how with the Lord a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. That, a day is a day for us. And so this verse is kind of saying the opposite of how time works for us. So that's reason number one, because God's timing is just different than our carnal, logical mind thinks. But number two, we walk by faith and not by sight. God wants us to walk by faith, not by sight. If he did everything how we predicted and how things were, would be logical, then we would be kind of seen. We'd be seen with logic, right? And that wouldn't require faith. But when we have no clue, God's timing. Because time and time again, he showed us he's not logical with his timing. And time and time again, we thought something was going to happen at this time, and it didn't. <laughs> and, we, and it just kept happening. We thought something was going to happen now, but it didn't. So God has now taught us we really have to depend on him. We have to walk by faith. We, we don't have a choice to walk by sight. We ha God has made it, so we don't have a choice. We have to walk by faith. And so this is a big reason why his timing looks different than our logical mind wants it to be. It's on purpose to stretch our faith, to force us to walk by faith. Stretch us, I should say, to walk by faith. Amen. So sometimes God will speak to you. He may speak to your spirit. Something's happening soon. Sometimes a prophet may prophesy, this is going to happen soon. And for us, probably most minds, being on this earth as humans, being logical in our minds, soon means probably like within a month maybe depends on the person. One person soon means in one week. One person means one month. One, one person means within a year, but probably not past a year, right? So a big prophecy can come. This is going to happen soon. And so in your mindset, you think within this year, at, I mean, at the latest, it has to be. But really, God's meaning was 
five years. It was still soon. We're talking eternity. That is soon in the scheme of things. That is soon when it comes to, when you compare it to the, the Israelites wandering for 40 years to get to the promised land. Right? And I found this happening, um, this, this kind of scenario happening to me when I received the prophecy from my life seven years ago. The prophecy that I was called to be an apostle and that I would, God was going to do miracles through me and I was called to reach the nations. And then about a, little, about a year later, this prophecy from my spiritual father, Prophet Dr. Joe Davies, same one who prophesied my calling, he prophesied that God has heard America's prayers and he has answered them now and he has brought revival now. Revival is now and it's starting in LA and it's spreading across the US and it's going to spread across the whole world. And he spoke revival is now. And so those are most two, two hallelujah, yes. And so I, myself and our church, we had, we had, we had these big prophecies, big prophecies, exciting prophecies. And, um, Especially the revival is now. I mean, it was the word now. Truthfully, me, I, I thought it was, I thought we would see what I pictured revival to look like. Many, many people, many miracles happening, salvations. I thought that would happen within one year. Was my logical, I guess, interpretation of the word now. But remember that things happen first in the spiritual realm, and then they, they later manifest in the physical realm. But what's happening in the spiritual realm is what's real. That's what's really real. It, 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 it's just, it's not like less real because you haven't seen it manifest yet. Because our spiritual truth is, is the real truth. It, it's not a physical uh, a truth that we live eternally. I mean, our bodies go in the ground, right? So this, this, this truth that we believe, not just that we believe, we know that we're going to live eternally with Jesus in heaven, that's a spiritual truth. But it's more real than the physical. That your spirit's more real than your physical. Your spirit will last forever. Your physical body will not. Hallelujah. God's a spirit. We cannot see him. But he's more real than anything. He's more real than anything physical we can touch. Even though this is real, God's more real. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the truth was, was revival was now in the spiritual realm. Angels were busy. God was doing lots of things in the spiritual realm. It was revival. But it didn't manifest in the physical realm yet, right away. Not the first year. Not the second year. Not the third year. Fourth year. Well, three and a half years after the revival is now prophecy is when we began to see it happen in the physical. The anointing flowing all of a sudden, demons being exposed, manifesting and being sent out of people, people being saved, healed, encountering God's power, suddenly hundreds filling in our park service when it was just five people a few months before. And it continuing and people traveling every week since that day that revival broke out of 300 coming, May 2021. So, but it was three and a half years, three and a half years of every, pretty much every day I woke up believing that I would see revival in the physical. <laughs> revival is now. I would, we, I would declare it, we would sing it, we wrote, we wrote a song, Chantal and I wrote a song, revival is now, your kingdom is here. We wrote that in the middle of waiting, of the years of waiting for the revivals to break out. And God called me to keep this flame alive to keep speaking it, to keep declaring it, didn't matter what I, what I saw, but to keep, keep speaking what he, is, what he had said was there in the spiritual realm. 
And so I kept saying pretty much, pretty much every service, most services, revival is now. <laughs> Any day now, we are going to see many, God do many miracles. Many, many people fill this place that we were worshiping at the time. We are going to see it any day. Revival's now. I, I, I was, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was declaring that for years when there was 20 people the first year, 15 people the next year, 10 people the next year, five people the next year, two people at 20, in the year 2020 when we went to the park, two of us. Still, revival is now. Even when it felt like we were going backwards, even when it felt like the opposite of revival. But through all of this, I mean, through me going through that, through me learning about God's timing and walking by faith, walking by faith and not by sight in the area of not knowing his timing. I grew so much. A big thing that happened was I was humbled. God humbled me. God humbled me to, to open my eyes up more to see that he doesn't reveal everything to me. He doesn't reveal to me the timing of when he's going to do things. He humbled me to, to, to just rest and trust him and not, and, 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 and it's good to have an idea. I think this will happen maybe this year, but not hold too tightly on that, but just let God be God and, and not be disappointed in him and not even let disappointment enter me as my eyes open up to how his timing is different, but it is perfect. Yeah. Hallelujah. So it's a beaut I mean, this is just beautiful. It's beautiful how God does this. It's beautiful how he doesn't reveal these things to us, the, the timing of things for the most part, because there's a great, thing he's doing in the spiritual realm by concealing, stretching our faith, humbling us, testing us. Amen? Um, Matthew 25, verse 1. This is the story of it, the, the bride, the, 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 bridesmaids who are waiting for the bridegroom, then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the day or hour of my return. So this, there's this story that God is giving. Uh, it's, this, it, it's showing us how the bridegroom is a, is a metaphor of God, of Jesus. And at the end, it says, you don't know the, the, the time that I'm coming. He chooses to not reveal when he will return. When Jesus will return, he chooses not to reveal the time to us. Because he, he wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Because he has great reasons and purposes why he's not revealing this to anybody. But this story in the Bible it's not only applied to the return of Jesus, 
but it's, it should be applied to God's timing in general, waiting on the promises of God. This is how God wants us to be, expectant, ready, with oil to keep our lamps burning, to, to be ready. And so, you know, God, God showed me even years later when the promises began to be fulfilled of revival, breaking out, revival is now. God revealed to me that he really needed, he needed me to be on fire. That was how the promise could be fulfilled in my life. That's how the revival could break out was if me as a vessel could keep the fire alive. I remember just really believing it was any day now. I remember year 2020, this is now three something years into believing in this promise that revival is now. And it was just a couple of us. And I remember I was in a revival is now t-shirt. Chantal and I, we sang revival is now. And I had a message sharing that revival is now. And I remember speaking with so much passion and expectancy. And I really believed in my heart any second now, any second, any day. And God revealed to me, if, if he had told me, hey, so revival actually isn't going to break out for several years. If he had told me that back then, there's no way I could have kept the fire alive. And I don't know what I would be like, but I might have been depressed even. I might have been thinking constantly like, we have so far to go. And on top of us having so far to go, it feels like we're going backwards. The church was getting smaller and smaller every year. Like, you know how heavy that would be? How kind of depressing it would feel? That's why it's too much for us to know sometimes. It becomes too much of a burden for us to know. God wants us to just be present in the moment with him, childlike, you know, because the truth is, is that we will have victory and that it's all worth it. And the promises will come to pass in perfect timing. That's the truth, but it's, it's, it's very difficult for us to live in that reality if we knew all that we had to go through, if we knew the amount of time it was gonna take to see the victory. It's, it would be very hard for us to really live in that truth. But if we don't know all this stuff, if God conceals this stuff, the in-between, the long lengths of timing, we're childlike and expectant, and, and not thinking about the dark things that we don't gotta think about. Amen? And that's how God wants us to be. Hallelujah. And so that's a big reason. This is giving you some, some insight of why God's ways are so perfect, of why he, he doesn't reveal his timing many times is for our own good, so we cannot be depressed knowing the timeline. <laughs> knowing what we have to go through, but we can keep the fire. We can be expectant. We can live our lives shining the bright light of Jesus full of faith. That's what we're called to. So we're called to be expectant, ready for that bridegroom to come anytime. You know, these, these um, bridesmaids, they didn't know when he was gonna come. He could come early. He could come when, he, when they thought he was going to come, and then he could come late. They didn't know. And so th they were called, the wise ones are ready for his early arrival and are also ready for him to be late. That's what we're called to when it comes to God's timing in our lives, the promises and the direction, like different, different moves he wants you to make. We are called to be that way, ready to move early ready for it to be when we think it's gonna be logically and ready for it to be delayed in our minds. Uh, uh, okay with that, patient, 
accepting. So we gotta have that heart of expectancy and not let ourselves get crushed with disappointment. Renew our minds. Well, he could come early or late. I'm not gonna be mad at God for being early or late in my mind. I'm gonna expect, but if it doesn't happen how I expect, that's okay. He can come late how I think, but not late for him. It's okay. He's gonna come. That's the, that's the moral of the story. He's gonna come. And this is how he works. And so I just accept it. This is just part of it. I'm teaching you a lot recently about how to be in the will of God. We learned last week, sometimes the will of God is not fun. We just got to accept it. It's okay. Sometimes God shows up later than we want him to. That's okay. Let's just accept it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, now I want to speak prophetically. I'm going to speak prophetically that in this revival that we are in, in in what God is, in where God is taking us here at Fivefold Church, in this revival, in this move of God, we are going at God's speed. Amen. We will be going at God's speed. Not our speed, God's speed. When it comes to God's speed, sometimes it's slower than we want him to go. Sometimes it's faster than we, than we are comfortable of him going. But we have to follow God's speed. We have to move with the cloud. As the Israelites, they stopped when the cloud stopped and they moved when the cloud went, moved. This is how we have to be. Ready to go at God's pace. We cannot, um, I, I also want to speak now, I mean, la- so far I've, I've been talking about something that most of you are probably more familiar with, and that is when it feels like God is delaying. When, it, when, when the promise comes or when God does something later than we thought it should happen or was going to happen, Right? That's probably the more common way that we're used to that you've maybe gone through in your life. But I want to also say that it does indeed work the other way too. God will sometimes want to go faster. Remember that one day can be a thousand years for God. God wants to pack in a thousand thousand years in one day. (laughs) And you're like, well, wait, I just want to process it a little bit, right? I, I remember for, for, for me, for four and a half years, life was pretty slow. I was, for a lot of the time, I was just in my home, just editing and just doing such mundane work all the time, but leaving for revival to break out year after year after year and um, never really traveled anywhere. I mean, it was just a very slow-paced, mundane life. And we had church on Sundays, but in that season of my life, it was uncomfortable for me to minister because that wasn't my, uh, my, my strength or passion was, to pre- was not to preach or speak publicly. So life for me was slow, mundane, uncomfortable for years. And so it felt, for me, it felt like God was going really slow. And then all of a sudden, everything changed overnight. Revival broke out. 300 people came that first service. And then it just kept being that amount or more every week. And people started traveling every single week since that day. People have gotten on planes to come here. And within just a few months, God started sending me, invitations started to come in, come in to, to minister in different cities and different states. And then a few months later, it was different countries. And so within just a, a few months of revival breaking out, a few months of going from slow to it's here, revival, a few months, just a few months later, I was ministering in a different city, state, or country every single week. And getting back for church on Sunday, every single week, that was a lot. That was for a year and a half. It was almost every single week. 
And it was amazing. Praise God. It was amazing seeing God touch people all over the world and move at such a fast pace. It was amazing. And I had no complaints myself. I was just overjoyed. And God had, had, had molded me to this place of just full surrender that I didn't mind the hard times that came with that of being so busy, so on the move, feeling like kind of almost too much packed into one day, one week. I remember so many people would say to me, how do you do it? And they would, they would speak to me with like dread almost, like better you than me. But glory to God because I, I was, it was God's grace for me. Like this, is, this was God's will for my life. So there was grace there. So for me, it was the best time of my life. It was the most fun and joy and blessed time with God doing his work than ever. And it was definitely stretching and hard and tiring at times for sure. But I was full of joy. But, but anyways, like some people, maybe if they were in my shoes, they probably could have been like, this is too fast, God. Even me, I remember like it was just, it was so beautiful seeing promises finally come to pass and then God exceeding them tremendously. But then like, then like a f- several months later, the devil got real angry and started to attack. And I started to face persecution like I never had before in my life. And that was hard. And I remember thinking like, man, I didn't even get to like, process and enjoy the blessings and the promises I've been believing in for so long because it was so fast. I remember feeling that way, like, ah, oh, this is, I can hardly pride that to say that sometimes it can feel like God is going too fast, but he's not going too fast. It's at his pace. It's not about us. It's about his people. It's about what he wants to do. It's about his plans. And so for his people to be saved, healed, delivered, encountered him, encounter him, equipped, receive impartation, to be powerful vessels of God, that's what's priority. That's what matters, not our comfort with the speed level of slow or fast. That doesn't matter. What God wants to do, that's what matters. So we have to forget our comfort level of speed, whether slow or fast. And remember that it's all about God and what he wants to do, his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So sometimes God wants to go 10 miles per hour. Other times God wants to go 100 miles per hour. We gotta be ready to move how God wants to move. And then, and then like there can be uh, timings of God that don't make sense, that don't add up, that's not logical. Like when you, when you look at the, when you look at David's life, David, he was very young. So that kind of doesn't make sense, the timing there, logically very young when he was called, when he was anointed. And then he was called by God to uh, defeat Goliath, also very young. And he's seen this speedy acceleration into his calling, right? Like he, he, he defeats Goliath, and then shortly after that, he gets tremendous favor from the king, from Saul, And then Saul's inviting him in to use his gifts and his anointing playing the harp to cast demons out of Saul. And then after that, Saul invites him into his like home area to stay. And then he sends him to go um, uh, be in the army. And he ends up doing, being such an amazing soldier. And and people are, are, are honoring him so big. And so if you, if you think about David, like he got this big calling, you're anointed to be king. And then all of a sudden, David started starting to see this progression. God moving. God's on the move. God's on the move. He's lifting me for his glory. Closer and closer to where I'm called to be. And so if you put yourself in David's shoes, it's like, okay, we're going at a good speed. I like. We're going pretty fast. 
This is great. We're right on track. And then what happens? Halt. Feeling like moving, he's moving backwards as Saul gets crazy jealous and now turns and tries to kill him and sends armies to try to kill him. Sometimes the timing doesn't add up. The, the, the speed at which God, it, this makes sense logically. We're, yes, we're on the way now. And then God says, stop. We're stopping here time to stop here for a moment. The cloud has stopped here. I'm going to now do a great work in you that's preparing you to go higher and faster than ever. But we got to stop first. We got to go slow first. There's different paces, different seasons, different paces of God. Ecclesiastes 3.1, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time for everything, a season for everything, a slow season, a fast season, and God can bring these in at different times in life, different times in your calling, different times in this, this, this end time revival that he has brought. I've seen God do that in my life. I've seen God do this in the revival. Speedy, slow down for a little bit. Speed up, slow down for a little bit. And it's never logical. It's never how you think it's going to be. He keeps you on your toes, building your faith every day. Hallelujah. And, and in verse 11, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has made everything beautiful in its time. So when it's God's timing, it's beautiful. It's perfect. It's right. It doesn't seem logical, but it's beautiful. It's perfect. It's right. Now, I just want to I want to show you this other example in the Bible of timing that doesn't add up logically. It doesn't make sense. So in Genesis 37:7, we're we're going to now to the story of Joseph. So Joseph was 17 years old, a young lad, a young teen, and um, he was his father's favorite child, even though he was not the firstborn. He had many other brothers older than him, and his brothers were jealous because he was the favorite, and he even got, at this age 17, his father gave him this beautiful coat of many colors, and this increased jealousy in them. So at this age 17, all of this favor is being poured upon Joseph, making the brothers more uh, jealous and more jealous. So then the brothers, uh, the brothers hear from Joseph. Joseph says to them, I had this dream. Age 17 still. And this is the dream. We, us brothers, were binding sheaves, which were of grain stalks, stalks of grain, in the field. And lo, my sheaves suddenly got up and stood upright and remained standing. And behold, your sheaves stood all around my sheaf and bowed down in respect. My brother said to him, are you actually going to reign over us? Are you really going to rule and govern us as your subjects? So they hated him even more for telling them about his dreams and for his arrogant words. But Joseph dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers as well. He said, see here, I have again dreamed a dream. And lo, this time I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowed down in respect to me. He told it to his father as well as to his brothers. But his father rebuked him and said to him in disbelief, what is the meaning of this dream that you've dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow down to the ground in respect before you? Joseph's brothers were envious and jealous of him, but his father kept the words of Joseph in mind, wondering about their meaning. And so this was a prophetic dream that God gave Joseph. This was a prophetic dream that would come to pass. So in the dream, it was um, grains, like, like the brothers' grains bowing down to Joseph's grains, but that was a prophetic picture of what would happen years down the line, Genesis 42, 6. This is the fulfillment of the, prophet, the prophetic dream. Now Joseph was the ruler over the land, and he was the one who sold grain to all the people of the land. 
And Joseph's half-brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the ground. Now, just to clarify this story, um, there's, a difference between bow, uh, there's a difference between bowing down in worship to God or bowing down in worship to another God or person like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to bow down in worship to Nebuchadnezzar's golden statue. But there's a difference between that kind of bowing down in worship and then what the sheaves were doing and what Joseph's brothers were doing, which was a posture in their bodies to show respect and honor to a person, but not worshiping the person. Um, and we know this because the Amplified Version actually clarifies it. The, the, the translation, it says um, that the, the sheaves bowed down in respect, Amplified puts in parentheses. Not worship, in respect. And we also know that Joseph was a servant of God. He wasn't in the wrong. And we don't see anything in scripture that he was supposed to say, no, you are worshiping me. You can't worship me. This was showing that this was respect and honor happening, not worship. Um, it's just like, you know, the queen or the king, the king in England, or when it's the queen, when it's, whether it's the king or the queen, the, the people in, in, not just England, the UK, um, believe that this queen or king is anointed by God as a servant of God to be a leader of the nation. And so when they come to see the king or queen, they curtsy or bow, and that is not worship. The, the king or queen never claims to be a god. They actually worship God and claim to be anointed as a vessel by God. And so even if you come from a different country, even like America, if you get to meet the king or if it's a queen sometimes, you Probably most people would curtsy or bow, but it, they know they, they themselves know it's not worship, it's honor, it's respect, you know. And even if it's not your feeling or culture to do that, that's not normal in the UK. That's normal. But if we were to go meet the president or someone that you just really respect and honor so much, there's this feeling in you of like so much respect and honor that saying the words merely "I respect you," "I honor you." doesn't feel like enough. So sometimes people may, when they meet someone they really respect or like the president or something, they might go like, I, I respect you. Something like that. Like, I respect you. Thank you. I honor you. Something like that. Or I honor you. Something like that. It's, there's this feeling of, I honor you so much that words don't suffice. In a in a godly way, amen, not a glorifying a person way, but just a respectful, honoring way, amen. So that's just to clarify that scripture, what was going on here. But um, what I want to go back to in terms of talking about the timing of God, the beautiful timing, Joseph, Joseph was age 17 when his, his father is giving him this beautiful coat and the, the brothers are increasing in their jealousy. And now God decides to like stir the pot, make things worse in terms of the brothers getting jealous by giving Joseph this dream. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you know, I'm not saying this is a godly way to be, but in the carnal way to be, most 20-somethings, 30-somethings, 40-somethings, they may see a teenager, and if God is using a teenager or a teenager is just blessed in general more than they are, they feel like it's not fair, like they need to put their time in, in life, right? Maybe it's like financially, for example, most people go through a financial hard time in all, your, in all your 20s, sometimes 30s, right? And so that's what I mean. Like for at age 17, God decides to give the dream then to Joseph. That became a catalyst for the jealousy to put, I mean, the jealousy to just put the jealousy in the, the, the brothers to put them over the edge, to throw Joseph over the edge, <laughs> right? Right, so logically, it's like, why wouldn't God, like, give him the dream, maybe in his mid-20s or something, you know? 
logically. But this was God's beautiful timing. Though this happened because he was age 17 and it was too much jealousy, God worked it all for good. God turned it all for good. God wasn't, God wasn't going to let the works of the devil delay his plans for Joseph's life. God wasn't going to be too sensitive to how evil the devil could be. No, the devil is nothing compared to God. No matter how evil the devil's schemes are, no matter evil the jealous works that people have in their hearts are, is nothing compared to what God will do, the victory that God will bring. Hallelujah. I lastly want to share this this, um, thing about God's timing is that I shared a little bit about it with my own life. This, This principle that when it comes to God's timing, he doesn't reveal all of the timing to his servants, to leadership. He, he, does, he doesn't reveal all the different kinds of timings. We see this in the life of Moses. God didn't tell Moses how long it was going to take to get out of Egypt. God said, go to Pharaoh. Tell him to let my people go. So Moses is like, okay, I'm going to say it. And then I guess he's going to let us go because God says he'll let us go. He'll, he'll let us go. God didn't tell him the timing, the amount of times he was going to have to repeat this. Go again and again. Let my people go. God didn't tell him the timing. The, all these plagues were going to come, signs and wonders were going to come, and how long that was going to take. He didn't know how long it was really going to take for them to get out of Egypt. God also didn't tell Moses how long it was going to take to reach the promised land. Moses was a leader. God was telling Moses many things. God was giving Moses direction for everything, all the needed direction, but God concealed the timing. I'm pretty sure that if God had revealed what was going to happen, how these people were going to be so disobedient and give Moses such a hard time, how they, all these people were going to make them be delayed 40 years, I'm pretty sure that would hinder Moses' leadership ability. It would be heavy, unnecessarily. So God sees he's got enough to bear. I'm going to conceal this that he does not have to know that would make it harder for him. Moses also didn't know how long he was going to be on the mountain talking to God. 40 days, 40 nights he was there, and the pe- he didn't tell the people. I, he just told them, I'll be back. And so in their minds, their timing was, by the end of the day, maybe. Maybe by the next day. By, by after a week, they were done. They had given up on their leader. They had thought their, their leader didn't hear right from God. Something, maybe something happened to him. They started building a golden calf and worshiping it and doing all sorts of sinful, gross things. This became a test for the Israelites. God not revealing the timing to Moses and to the Israelites became a test for the Israelites. Will you trust God and will you trust the leader he's given you? Even when (laughs) Moses, the leader, is really ambiguous I'm going up the mountain to pray pray to God. I'll be back 40 days later. But that's what God wanted. That was God's will. Moses didn't do anything wrong. Moses didn't like withhold something or, or anything. So 
what's, what's so important is that we need to trust God's leadership. We need to understand how God works. We need to understand that God's not going to reveal everything to us in terms of timing. And he's also not going to reveal every little detail like timing to your leader. So when you feel like you're in the dark or something, or you don't understand things, or things don't seem logical, you're in the right place. Don't complain. Don't doubt. Trust God. And trust your leader that God's given you. Don't try to figure things out. Don't start doubting because things don't make logical sense. Because you don't think God would move this kind of way. Because you don't think God would take up your leader for 40 days and speak to him for 40 days and just let you stay down there without your leader. Wondering what's going to go, go on. So we got to trust. Amen. So the Israelites lost trust in Moses when he was up on the mountain with God. They failed that test. So now we learn from the word of God today. We learn from their example. We learn to do better. Amen. We learn to trust God. Trust his timing. Trust his leadership. Trust the leaders he's given you. And don't be demanding, demanding to know everything, demanding to know timing. Just trust all you have to do is trust. That's all you have to do. You don't have to worry about anything else. Just trust. Trust God. Trust your leader. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. God, we thank you for your perfect ways that you make everything beautiful and it's time. And we commit to trusting you in your timing. We commit to, to laying down our whole lives. And, 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 and that includes laying down our minds. Laying down being logical. But we trust you, Lord. We put our faith, we put our trust in you, God. We say yes to your timing. We say yes to your ways. Your timing is perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. Amen. So we will go fast when you want to go fast. We will go slow when you want to go slow. Are you ready to go fast when God wants to go fast? We are on the Revival Wave Highway. Let me say it again. That means there is speed on a highway. On a roundabout, you have to go slow. But on a highway, you have to go fast. It doesn't work if you don't go fast on the highway, right? You got to keep up with the highway speed. We're on the revival highway right now. Prophetically, it's time to go fast. I speak this now. So don't get too comfortable because sometimes, sometimes you want God to, to slow down because you're comfy where you're at. And going faster, though it's exciting, it might be uncomfortable. It might not be exactly what you want. But we got to say yes to God when he wants to go fast. Are you ready to go fast with God? Hallelujah. When God, when God does one big miracle, we can be tempted to be like, just focus on the miracle and stay in a box when God's ready to do more and more miracles. Israelites were like, I'm good with all the signs and wonders, all the plagues, you know, all the signs and wonders back in Egypt. I'm good, and I'm ready to have a nice, brisk walk to the promised land. Let's relax now. Let's enjoy the, the food falling from the sky. Let's enjoy the peace no longer seen and hearing that Pharaoh guy. And then what, what did God do? He says, I'm ready to go faster. I'm ready to do an even bigger miracle than all those signs and wonders. I'm ready to split the sea. This miracle will be talked about for all of eternity. This massive miracle I'm going to do for you all. But it was going to require discomfort, huh? It was not the comfort of strolling through the desert. It was a great discomfort to see Pharaoh and his armies ready to kill them. 
pushing them up against the sea, right? So I speak that prophetically, that when God's ready to do even greater miracles, don't put him in a box. Don't put him in a box in Egypt with all the signs and wonders. Be expectant. Get ready for him to part the sea, to do another miracle, a greater miracle, even if it requires discomfort. Amen? God, we're ready for you to part the sea. We're ready for you to do big miracles, miracle upon miracle. We're ready to go fast. We're ready to go with you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I will go where you lead me, Lord. We will go where you lead us, Lord. We will follow your cloud. When you want to move, we will move. When you want to stop, we will stop and we will be content. We say yes, Lord. Yes to your ways. Yes to your timing. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to give thanks to God right now through sowing, through giving. He is so worthy of making a sacrifice to him, of giving our best to him. Amen. Speaking of God moving at a fast speed, he is moving at a fast speed here at Fivefold Church in multiple ways. And it's so exciting. One of the ways he's moving fast is doing this conference. Doing this conference in the middle of this new elevation he has brought us to a place of higher quality and excellence in the house of God and also for viewers online. He has brought us to such a higher level. But that higher level comes with a cost and it comes with a physical cost. It comes with a price tag, literally a physical price tag that's so much higher that it's six times more than what we were paying before, right? So in the middle of us going fast with God in this new level, he has called us to put this conference on. And it's at the Orpheum Theater. Anybody know the Orpheum Theater? Raise your hand. It's a massive theater. It seats a lot of people. I think like 1,500 or something. And we're expecting all of our five-fold church family across the world to be there. So we had to make sure we got a big, God said to get a big place. And so in LA, that's a big price tag. That's $54,000 for two days total. And that's before any other extra costs. So it's gonna be 90,000 to 100,000 when you add in all of the other things that are needed in two months. What did I say about, about we wanna, the big miracle, but it comes with discomfort and a cost, right? But this is what God's saying. This is is where God wants to take us. Hallelujah. It's not logical, but it's what God wants. Praise God. So he's asking this of all of us. This is part of the price of the new level. This is part of the price of what he's going to do in all of your lives at the conference and all who are going to come. This is part of the cost is to make this sacrifice to him, to sow into it, to help support this conference, this work of God that he's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. So I encourage you today to to so generously, to make a sacrifice to God, to say yes to going at a fast speed and all that that entails. Say yes to being part of this revival and all that entails. Amen? Hallelujah. So if you would like to give online, we have a QR code. You can go to 5fchurch.org slash give. There's giving envelopes on your chairs, which also have the QR code. If you want to give in the envelope, if you want to give checks, make them out to 5F Church, 5F Church. And those of you watching online, you can go to the link in my bio on Instagram, or you can go to 5fchurch.org slash give for those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you, Lord. You can lift your, if you can lift your seeds right now or your, your phones if you're giving online. I declare that with a greater sacrifice, with more that God is asking, that 
increase would come in your life like never before. God provides. God gives seed to the sower. He always gives seed to the sower. So I speak right now, seed to increase. Seed to increase in your life now in Jesus' name. I speak this anointing to come upon your finances, to come upon every aspect of your financial life, in your business, your job, your, your ministry, your family's finances, the, the bills that need to be paid that you don't know how they're gonna be paid. I send this anointing to all of those, those needs, all of those concerns, all of the places of lack. I speak all lack and poverty to go. And I speak abundance to you in Jesus' name. And I speak those of you that are sowing today, also believing God for a miracle. You have a certain need, something you're believing for, you're planting a seed in the ground for. I speak harvest. I speak this anointing to come on this need. Receive these miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can come forward and bring your seed up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for all that you're doing, for your hand upon our lives, your hand upon 5F Church, your hand upon every person in this room. We thank you, Lord, for every miracle that you are doing in this place, that you're about to do in this place right now. It's time right now to receive from Jesus, anointing that destroys the yoke. Amen. Is anyone ready and hungry and expectant? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I just want to encourage all of you right now to just position yourself to receive from God. Some of you, you know you came here needing, desperately needing and believing in God for deliverance, for healing, for a miracle. I encourage you, if that's you, come to the altar, come to the front. Some of you feel demonic oppression manifesting in you. You felt it during the service. It's the anointing exposing the demonic oppression and it's time for that to go. If that's you, you can come to the front right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to just invite every one of you right now, if you have never given your life to Jesus, some of you, you haven't given all of it. Maybe you've 
given part of it. Maybe you haven't surrendered everything, surrendered his timing. It's time right now to surrender everything to Jesus, to give every part of your life to Jesus. I encourage you, just invite him in, invite him to take your whole life and make it his. that you would belong completely to him, that your life would no longer be your own, but God's. So just say in your own words right now, if, if God has been convicting you, just speak to him from your heart, your own words, areas you haven't surrendered, if you haven't given your whole life to Jesus, now is the time. Thank you, Jesus. surrender every part. Some of you need to surrender how God wants to touch you today, deliver you, heal you. It's no person that's going to heal you or deliver you. It's not me that's going to heal you or deliver you. It's only Jesus. Jesus is the only healer and deliverer. He's the only miracle worker. Some of you might have had in your mind that I must, Apostle Catherine must pray for me. You got to surrender that to Jesus and put your eyes to Jesus and say, Lord, I know that you will heal me and deliver me and you will do it however you want to do it. Whether that's through a one-on-one prayer, through Apostle Catherine, or if that's just you touching me, where I am standing or where I am watching, I surrender, Lord. Surrender to God now. From your heart, with your own words. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is bringing freedom right now, hon. He's freeing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see witchcraft being broken off right now. I break off all witchcraft off your life now in Jesus' name. All of this discouragement, all of this doubt must go. All of this heaviness must go. God is in control. I speak the heaviness to be lifted off of you now. All the discouragement, disappointment to be lifted off. Be at peace now. Be free of all of this darkness, dark thoughts in your mind. Be free. In Jesus' name, I release this anointing to you now. Be at peace now. Be full of God's strength and his joy now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing to you and I declare healing. Healing in your whole body. In Jesus' name. I speak pain to go from your body. Complete healing and peace. All of this heaviness must go in Jesus' name. All of the depression must go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You, hun. You, hun, right here. Come over here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come, hun. God's touching you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I break every curse off of your life now. And I declare every spirit of witchcraft 
infirmity and every spirit that came through mistreatment of you. Every spirit that came through this hurt, people mistreating you, people not seeing you rightly. I speak this all must leave you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Be free completely now in Jesus' name. I release this anointing to you. Be filled with peace now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to free you right now. Hallelujah. Depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, drug addiction. I've had this for a long time and I'm ready to give my, God, my heart to God and, and start a new life. Amen. It's time for freedom right now. God loves you and he's so proud of you. I detach you from all of that. I break every generational curse off of you now. I cancel every covenant of suicide and I declare every spirit attached, every spirit of suicide, depression, addiction, I declare all must leave you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I declare from now you will not have a taste for anything that you were addicted to before. You are free in Jesus' name. I speak complete freedom to you now. And I release this anointing to you. May peace and joy fill you. I speak the fire of the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. Be filled with his love. May nothing keep you from God's will. Thank you, Jesus. He has great plans for your life. He has wiped away the past completely. And your life starts now. It's you are a new creation now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. God wants to free you right now, sir. Yes, God wants to touch you now, right now. I break every curse and upon your life now in Jesus' name. I break every curse of witchcraft. And I speak every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of death, and every spirit of depression must go now in Jesus' name. I speak healing to you in Jesus' name. May this anointing cover you, fill you, and may you have abundant peace and abundant joy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. May nothing hold you back again, but may you be light and full of strength and joy to do God's work. He still has great plans for you, many great plans for your life and things he's calling you to do. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You, hun? You, hun? Right here? Yes. You can come. You can stand right here, hun. God is touching you. Thank you, Jesus. He's bringing freedom right now. Thank you, Lord. Yes, this is his anointing. This is him touching you right now. Thank you, Jesus, delivering you. Thank you, Lord. I break every attack of the enemy to try to pull you out of God's will, to try to pull you backwards, because I see you making efforts to be in God's will and being pulled right and left when you try to go straight in God's will, you're constantly being pulled out. 
I see people being sent to you to bring distraction and speak wrong things to try to pull you away. God is freeing you from this demonic attack now. I break every demonic soul tie now. I break this curse and upon you, this curse where the enemy did not want you to serve God and be in God's will. And I declare every spirit of stagnancy, every spirit that's holding you back, pulling you back, every spirit that came from these demonic soul ties, every spirit of manipulation, I declare all must go now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All of the depression gone in Jesus' name. I speak complete freedom now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I release this anointing upon you now. May nothing take you out of God's will again. May peace and joy fill you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for all you are doing. You with the little young boy in the yellow shirt? Yeah. Can you come? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They're they're together. Yeah, you can come too. This is a family. Did you travel to be here, hon? From where? Bolivia. Bolivia. Wow. Praise God. It's your day of freedom. It's your day of deliverance right now. Thank you, Jesus. What did you come here for? What brought you here? God told us to come here. We are dying to live here. We are new just three weeks ago. You moved here. Praise God to be here at 5F. To hear and see what happened here and to live here. And I don't know what because we are just hearing the voice of God to come here without nothing. Wow, praise God. You're following the cloud. And I speak this with confirmation right now. I speak this with confirmation. You heard God rightly. Your purpose is here. The children's purpose is here. This is where God wants you. And he has called you all to be powerful vessels of him. You will not live a natural life, but a supernatural life. And I see a great call on your life, on all of your lives. I see a great call. I see you ministering to others and God moving through you and the power of God moving through you. And, and, and making disciples. I see just so many lives transformed by you and all of you, this family. And I see this is why God has brought you here because this is where this impartation and equipping will take place for you to fulfill your calling. I speak all heaviness off of you, everything that has held you back before, all of the all of the discouragement, all the confusion, all of the negative words from other people that didn't understand. I wipe that all away from you now in Jesus' name. All of the heaviness of being in God's will, may it be gone from you now in Jesus' name. And I release this anointing upon you. May this anointing fill you now. May peace and joy fill you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. 
God is going to do amazing things through you all. He has such great plans for your lives and he's gonna provide everything. I, I, I call now good godly people to come in your lives, good godly friends to come and that you would all prosper. The desires of your heart would be fulfilled and reward is coming for your obedience to God, from your, from your being obedient to mom, this obedience in your heart I release this anointing to you all now. May peace and joy fill you in Jesus' name. And I declare provision for this whole family. Doors to open up that you will not want for anything. God is providing everything. He's providing everything. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome. Welcome to the family. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is revival. Look what God is doing. God, we praise you for the amazing things you are doing among your people. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You gentlemen, in the plaid, in the plaid, yes, come here. God's touching you right now. Thank you, Jesus. God sees your heart. You put others before yourself. He's so proud of you but you are so important to him. You, you matter so much to him. Your freedom, your abundant life matters to him. And it's time to receive this now, this freedom. I break every curse off your life now in Jesus' name. Every curse of witchcraft broken now. Every curse of lack broken now in Jesus' name. And I speak every spirit of lack, every spirit of addiction, every impure spirit coming in the mind with these dark negative words I declare all must go now in Jesus name thank you Jesus be free completely thank you Jesus may you live how you've always wanted to live now following God's will perfectly, purely. I release this anointing to you and I speak healing, healing to you, complete healing, peace to fill you in Jesus' name and abundance, abundance, provision to come in your life for all that you need in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You right here. Right to the front. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hallelujah. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. I speak right now over this family, every generational curse broken now in Jesus' name. Every word curse broken, every negative word spoken over this family, over this, this man, I break it now in Jesus' name. And I declare every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit coming in the mind, every spirit of torment in the mind, every spirit of infirmity and depression and death and darkness all must leave this family now in Jesus name thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I speak sound mind upon him now the mind of Christ I release this anointing to you both. I speak peace 
to fill you. May you be made new. All of the problems and issues, may they be gone. All of the issues in the mind, may they be gone. And may you be made new now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I speak all of the heaviness. Is this mom? I speak heaviness to be lifted off all the heaviness that you've carried, all depression, all heaviness gone. May you live a life of peace and joy and abundance. This weight is gone and every weight that you've carried belongs to Jesus now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is, I see God right now removing weights off of people that are supposed to be in God's hands. Worries, cares. I see for many people, it's your children. Problems that they've had, mental problems that they've had, sicknesses that they've had. Some of them have not good friends, bad influences. You've carried this worry and, and God's asking you to give it to him right now and he is breaking that yoke that has come by you holding on to what's his, the, 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 the weight the burden. I declare all of this weight, this burden to come off you all now in Jesus' name. All of this depression that you've carried because of things that have happened, because of things with your ch happening with your children, because of disappointment, I speak the spirit of depression to go from every person here in Jesus' name. And all anxiety, worries, fear, must go in Jesus' name. I see God delivering people from fear of something happening to their loved ones. Some of it, some of it, uh, it's your children, you're afraid of something ha bad happening to them. Some of you, it's your parents, you're afraid of something bad happening to them. Some of it, some of you, it's a spouse, you're afraid of something bad happening to them. I declare now this spirit of fear, of loss, this spirit of fear must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shikia Rabanabara Sikia. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. You, hun, right here. You can come over here, hun. Thank you, Jesus. God is touching you right now, hon. He's bringing freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's things in the past that have been carried, you've been carrying, like weights from the past. Past relationships past bad things that have happened to you. I speak right now this tie connecting you to the past to be cut off of you now in the spiritual realm in Jesus' name. I break every demonic soul tie and I declare every spirit that has come from trauma, every spirit of heaviness, of depression, and every spirit that speaks against you, that speaks against your identity. I do, every spirit that comes in your mind, your thoughts are, are negative towards yourself. I declare all must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are free. You are free. Thank you, Jesus. You will walk in your purpose now, light and in abundance. 
of peace and joy and abundant life. I release this anointing to you. May you walk in abundant life, in peace and joy, nothing holding you back anymore in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. And I see prophetically there's some of you that are holding things on. You are heavy. Some of you feel heavy. Some of you are carrying things from the past. There's a thing in the spiritual realm, demonic thing, demonic tie holding you back. And it's time to break free from that now. It's time to live as a new creation walking in abundant life with Jesus. Not the past that was in bondage. Not the past that had trauma. Amen. I speak right now every tie holding you back to be cut in the spiritual realm in Jesus' name. These regrets, these ways that you've sinned in the past. These, some of you have done bad things in the past and you've held on to it. You've held on to it as a part of your identity. You've kept it with you. You haven't rejected it when it came in your mind. It's time to be free. I declare every demonic spirit speaking in your mind, reminding you of your past, of your of dark past. It must go now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that speaks against your identity in Christ, every spirit that tries to say you're a filthy sinner, I declare this must leave you now in Jesus' name. I declare you are no longer a slave to sin. You are no longer a slave to sin. You are pure. You are the righteousness of God. You are a new creation. You are beloved by God. In Jesus' name, I speak this trauma to come out. Abuse, spirits that came from abuse must go from every person in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you together? All of you are together? Okay. I see God touching you all right now. I see a hunger that he has brought you here today a qu to quench your thirst. And, and I see God saying he is calling you to be like a pioneer, to go against the grain in a place of old wine, skin, he's calling you to bring the new wine. And I just see God confirming this in your heart because you've felt this calling, but there's been so much resistance. There's been a lot of religious attacks against you. And that sometimes there's confusion, like, am I hearing right? Am I doing the right thing? God is confirming this now, yes. I have called you to something different. And where you are now, like this, I see this atmosphere you're in, it's like you feel like you're the only one sometimes. There's so many people whose spiritual eyes are not open around you. And God's confirming this, that you have heard him, that you do see rightly. And you are called to open up eyes with love, with kindness and gentleness and the power of God moving through you, eyes will open up. And though it seems hard, God has equipped you for this. Nothing will be too hard. Can you all come here? Can you all come here? I release this anointing to you to do this work that God has called you to do, to be like a David, to be like a Joseph, to go against the grain, to bring new wine. Receive this anointing now. I speak protection to you and strength to you to do God's work in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and God, God, is, is, God is bringing a fire and strength to every one of you. Because all of you who are here, you are, you are called to go against the grain. You are called to bring new wine. And it's time to be strong and not be weighed down and not be discouraged. 
but to be confident in who God's called you to be and what he's called you to do and not mind the opposition, not care about the persecution, not let it drag you down, but to be strong. So I speak right now to strength, strength to come upon you all, the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon you and fill you with boldness, with courage, with joy to do God's work. And I declare nothing can stop you. Nothing can hold you back in Jesus' name. You will have victory and you will do powerful things for Jesus. God will move through you in your obedience and you will change lives by the power of God. Miracles will happen through you. The sick shall be healed. The oppressed shall be free. The blind shall see in Jesus' name. I speak protection over all of you, that you would stay strong and stay on fire. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to speak right now to all children here, every children that has any kind of issue, any kind of, uh, some children have here have a mental problem. God is bringing healing and freedom now. God is in the business now of healing every kind of issue, sickness, problem right now. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. I break every generational curse off of every person here now in Jesus' name. And I declare every spirit of infirmity, every spirit bringing a mental problem, mental illness must go in Jesus' name. And I speak these mental illnesses to be removed. The things that you could not do, that these children could not do, that they couldn't process or understand or think correctly in. May, may your mind function now in Jesus' name. May it function well now in Jesus' name. I declare sound mind over every child here and every adult here that has problems in the mind. I speak sound mind in Jesus' name. Sound mind in Jesus' name. Peace. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. I speak healing, this anointing to fill you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is so proud of you with the Nike, Nike right there. God is so proud of you. He delights in you. You are a leader. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, I declare right now over every person here who has sickness in their body, I declare that by his stripes you are healed. And I release healing to you today. I speak all the sickness gone from your body. I speak the pain to be removed out of your body in Jesus' name. Be healed now. I see God healing arthritis in someone with, someone with, um, like you're not supposed, like you get arthritis like as a young person. I declare healing to you now in Jesus' name. I speak deafness to go and ears to open up. And I speak eyes to open up for you to see in Jesus' name. I see someone having a scalp problem, a problem in their scalp, and I see hair falling out. I speak healing to you and this to stop, this, this hair falling out to stop. I see someone having a problem with lymph nodes, a lymph node issue. I speak healing to you now in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I see someone with this new pain that has come, new pain in their back that hasn't been going away. I declare this pain to be removed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Pain in the neck, be healed in Jesus' name. I declare everything in the body that has been taking a long time to heal, like the natural process of healing, it hasn't been healing. Injuries skin problems. I speak speedy healing, supernatural healing to you in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. And I see right now God healing, freeing people of insomnia. Every person having issues with sleeping. I speak from now, you shall sleep well. 
through the night in Jesus' name. And, and I, and, and I, this, there's a scheme of the devil bringing, trying to get you, to, you've been free of addiction. You've been free of things in the past, but all of a sudden out of nowhere, it feels like the devil has come up with this strategic scheme, bringing familiar thoughts from the past, temptation thoughts. But God is saying right now, you are free. These are lies. These thoughts don't have a hold on you. Like, it's not like before when you were oppressed and you tried to, to resist the thoughts, but it didn't work. Now you can resist and they must flee. The devil must flee. I speak to every scheme of the devil to try to come back, bombard you in your mind with these, these temptations, these demonic thoughts. They must go now. He must leave your mind now. This must go from your mind now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak complete freedom and healing now to every person here and watching in Jesus' name. And I want to declare now over all of you for this week. This week, I declare nothing to hold you back from being in God's will. When God is calling you to do things uncomfortable or things that are new, that, that you would have strength and you would have wisdom to follow God's voice. In Jesus' name, I speak this victory for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I speak strength and energy and health to you this week. It would be a week where you sleep well. You would have energy. You would have strength to do all God's calling you to do. Your, your joy would be overflowing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I declare this week that you would be a powerful vessel of God. This week, God is going to bring people to you whether it's in person or social media, to your page. He's gonna be bringing them to you to encounter him through you, for you to be the light of the world. And so I declare miracles to take place through you. Miracles to take place, faith to increase in people because of what God does through you in Jesus' name. Eyes to open up because of what God does through you in Jesus' name. It will be a week of growth. It will be a week of growth in the spiritual realm, I declare. You will go glory to glory and higher and higher. In Jesus' name. This is not a week of stagnancy, but growth in Jesus' name. I speak abundant peace and abundant joy to fill all of you. Abundant life in every area. Peace to cover your family, your marriages, your home in Jesus name peace in your workplace in Jesus name amen hallelujah praise Jesus for all he has done hallelujah thank you Jesus God we praise you for all you have done today all the miracles all of the healing and freedom thank you Jesus for your love for your power. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Say, I have received. You truly have. His anointing is here. You have received today. When you will claim it with faith and be spiritual, walking by faith and not by sight, you will see it manifest it physically in your life. Some of you, by faith, you have received a miracle, not by sight yet. You don't see a difference, you don't feel a difference, but it has happened. Walk by faith and not by sight, and you will see it manifest in your life physically, fully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to remind you all to share your testimony, to go to the testimony booth right over there by those screens as soon as service is, is over. 
It's so important to share your testimony. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. This is one of the very important keys to keep what you have received, to maintain your freedom, is to share what God has done. It's a protection in the spiritual realm that takes place when you share, amen? And this is how God can entrust you with more, when you'll be faithful with what he's released to you. Anybody wanna be used more and more by God and wanna be trustworthy? You gotta use what he's given you. You gotta release what he's given you, amen? So I encourage you to share your testimony after service and reminder that we're gonna be at Belasco Theater next Sunday at 12 p.m. Amen. God bless you all.